My name is Fidel Osei Ajima, the 59th president of Atlantic Hall. So when we took over as the 59th executives of the hall, we saw the need to document the history of the hall for future generations to know what has happened in the past and how far each year has come. And that is what birthed the need to have this documentary for the hall. It has been established by consensus in the university that each year rules since 1962. We believe that God is a marina and no ATO, no UCC. Over the years, we've seen a lot of innovation that comes up in the university, most of which originate from Atlantic Core. That is why we call ourselves the pace setters of the university. Currently, I am Chief Auditing Assistant at the Directorate of Internal Audit, UCC. Concerning ATL Hall, I got admission into ATL Hall in the year 2003. When I had my admission letter to um, pursue my first degree at UCC, I remember that that evening my dad brought me my admission letter and I opened and screamed and my dad was like why screaming why I is the fee so low than you were expecting I said ah that uh, I got eight year I was like ah what do you mean by you got eight year I said hmm one day when you traveled, I had this friend at TCC whom I followed to one of the whole week. And interestingly, this guy is Uba Hola. But this guy is so addicted to ATL that you, you hardly know that he is from his Uba Hola fleet. So what I did was I followed him. We came to enjoy the ATL whole week. And from that day, I told myself if I should get admission to UCC. It's ATL I want to be. So my mind was already preoccupied with ATL, ATL. So I asked this friend, if I want to be in ATL, or what should I do? Say that one is by chance. When your admission letter comes, where you will be placed is where you will be. So when I opened the letter, all what I was looking for is my hall of affiliation, and it was ATL. So I had to scream, wow, I've gotten the hall of my choice. And my dad was so angry that you, the fees, you are not looking at the fees, you are looking at hope. If I don't pay your fees, how do you get to the door? I said, oh, while there is admission letter, you definitely pay the fees. But my interest is the hall I'm also going to. Then we, we, we laughed over. So I got, I think I, 
specific specific data for what it but it was in August 2003 when uh, I finally entered the gates of ECC and specifically Atlantico. That was a nice day, one of the happiest moments, just to see myself also entering the hall I've always loved to be. I came, we went through the proce uh, procedure of registration and I was given the last floor, the ascended floor. And here am I, who is height uh, phobia. I managed to climb the 600 for I said, ready. If you hold issue, the baby on market said that some other. However, I had no option than to let the joy of being in the hall uh, overrule my phobia for height. So we, we, I got into my room managed to be on the Senate floor and it was nice experience to be on top, to be screaming at the top of your voice. The, 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 the hall was just uh, perfect and perfect for some of us because um, our orientation was a bit full of anti so, so coming into the hall where you, you have to come out whether you like it or not, especially when you see your ladies who you expect that they should be more calm and more like men. You have no option than to also to be like a man. And eight years really shaped my, 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 my life on campus. Name is Anthony Ananpra. Fully told, I am Sir Professor Anthony Ananpra, a retired professor of animal science, specifically veterinary surgeon who taught animal health and disease control, anatomy and physiology of farm animals, and microbiology. I am retired since 2013, when I attained the age of 60. But I have been re-engaged to teach the same subjects on contract. And that is why I am still in the university of Cape Coast. I was first employed in the University of Cape Coast in 1989 on the 9th of August and apart from my academic duties in lecturing I had also headed the board of the University Hospital and also had become an Ugwa Hall Master. It is from there that in 2006 I was appointed the Hall Master of Atlantic Hall. I went to Atlantic Hall when my predecessors had laid foundations and I was to build on this foundation. To go to Atlantic Hall meant that I was going to meet people who accepted as their motto, knowledge, initiative, and, uh, and dynamism. And with these three keywords, I had to work. When I was appointed first, I went on a cursory visit to meet the hallmaster who was Professor Quist who was about to exit that was in 2006. I looked rather smallish and uh, simple so my first impression when I went to Atlantic Hall was to ask for the hallmaster's office from one um, hall porter called Nada and uh, the hall porter mistook me for a student and was very annoyed that as a student I didn't know my hall master. I did not react to this but I said that really I don't know the hall master properly. I wanted to see him. He brushed me off. So I left the hall whereupon somebody told him that I was the incoming hallmaster. Then he rushed to me to try to retract his behavior, but I said that 
No. It gave me an impression of where I am coming to. And so I took a cue from that, that to move Atlantic Hall forward, it has to be a cooperation between hall management, the workers there, and the students there. And so it needed a lot of reorganization, restructuring, a partnership between hall management, students, and workers, partnership between workers and students, so that we all have a common mission about the hall. So together with these people, we crafted a sort of um, vision and mission. We started to find our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, and our threats. And uh, we came to a conclusion that we have to develop the whole infrastructurally. We have to develop the whole in the human aspect of cooperation. And uh, we have not only to do that for students who are in school, but also in liaison with the alumni and the overall university administration. Therefore, to do that meant that first you have to empower the students to use what they believe in, knowledge, dynamism and initiative to bring ideas that the hall master will support with his resources. Then, at that time, the director of human resource was one Mr. P.K. Ahim. So I went to him and asked him that for sending personnel to Atlantic Hall, they must choose personnel who are artisans. And so we got personnel who were artisans but were given the designations as sanitary officers. They did their work in sanitation and they were also conservancy personnel. But in fact, many of them were masons, electricians, plumbers, mechanics, etc. So it was for lack of work that they accepted that designation. And it is with them that we form a partnership for infrastructural changes in the home. And so all that was possible to be done, you crafted the idea with both students and the workers showed it to management, budgeted for it, and then uh, implemented. Then we scheduled a program for how the hall was to be painted. Every three years, it has to be painted. Then with these same workers, we tried to make rooms out of empty spaces. Atlantic Hall was actually a hall which was standing on stilts, on pillars. So on these pillars, together with the workers, we closed them up and these became the stores for, uh, for the hairdresser at the back of the hall, for the tailor and for an all-purpose shop. They were empty spaces. And then there was a place also for um, a warehouse uh, which is uh, for those who lined up just at the southern side of the hall, uh, etc. Now, to let the hall be united, we came with this that uh, 
Atlantic Hall must at all costs have a purpose which is unified. And the unification of it was crafted into a symbol of a statue of a mother carrying a pot of water and a child who was about to lose a ball. The whole idea is that Atlantic Hall, no matter the situation, will never abandon her children. So the mother stood for the Atlantic Hall as a symbol and the child well, were the students of Atlantic Hall. And so you will see that the mother is trying to save the boy who has lost the ball. Which means that even if the students will lose their focus sometimes, you do not have to abandon them, but set up good counseling to bring them together. And when the university has to deal with them, they have because they have gone overboard, then you try to save them and counsel them. Because it has uh, a multiplier effect. If students don't feel like brothers, sisters, and loved in the school, when they leave the school as alumni, they will not also remember. And then when I became the home master, in fact, the trend continued, even though there are some few challenges and you realize that uh, there was some a little bit immaturity on the part of the students because they were young and sometimes they misinterpreted some of the things that we used to do. But then by and large, the experiences, I mean, was I mean, still interesting. And then if you look at some of the whole weeks that we did, and it was interesting being with them and always move step with step with students and in fact i mean i was enjoying being the hall master over the period that i stayed there and then my vision was to transform the hall into a place as well the best place in the, on campus so i started renovation from all the levels and then and the students were very happy we also have to craft hall paraphernalia hall paraphernalia included the first uh, what cloth of the hall, a ties, neckties, uh, crests, cufflinks, etc. and vests. Um, most of these things uh, were done in Ghana but also partly were imported from China. Okay? And uh, it is together with these same students and with poor management that we said that in order that we should be closer together, we should put up an annex. Now the annex was initially to have uh, floor libraries, but the university situation of in, out, out, out came. And so only the ground floor and the basement floor were made library and gym. Then the rest of the floors became uh, sort of flats for people. It was the initial idea that the whole hall okay, will be together and be in cohesion. Maybe on hand side, we may have acquired another plot on the periphery of the university so that it becomes an annex and that we can make expansion uh, uh, thereof. So now that is in existence. For that matter, uh, my whole tutors and myself have to forego our allowances, certain allowances, etc., so that we gather money for oh, that uh, annex. When we got that money, unfortunately, the Dumso situation came and it was very challenging. So we became the first hall to buy a generator so that the hall has electricity all, all the time. And uh, that was it. Although it was expensive to maintain, but to train people well was an expensive endeavor and we had to invest. Consequently, the 
and next have been completed my, by my successor, uh, Dr. Kisakosa, and is now uh, functional. So looking at it, you realize that uh, at a point, you know, at usual, Atlantic Hall used to be a real, I mean, hall. It was um, some years that they realized that you need to mix the hall. But mixing the hall has not changed the tradition of the hall because uh, the, the almost most of the time, all the females that they bring there seems to love the tradition of the hall. So, I mean, and one thing I realized was that the female male ratio was actually very small. So I, I decided to convert some of the floors, uh, a lot of them into female floors, and then so that at least you could have, I mean, a certain something like 45, 55. Sort of, so that at least they can all enjoy the experiences in the hall. But we loved it. I remember when we came at the freshest Aquaba and we asked to hold our balls for the guys and the ladies to hold their breasts. And we were taken through the Atlantic Hall anthem. Actually, at that time, we didn't have the normal ETL anthem as we have now. It was a power anthem that was more or less the ETL anthem. So. There is a song, Yesu Kame Homozi Metri. Then that was the song that is being used for our anthem in our version. Atlantic, Koti, or a whole titi in that order. I was like, wow. It was actually fun. I, I, I realized that now I'm getting a different form of orientation other than, even though some may think it's bad, but then you know where you are coming from. You know where to pick and what to drop. In all, it's supposed to shape your life. Uh, I had a lot of memories uh, about Atlantico. Um, remember our matches with uh, Casford, which never ended in peace. Uh, nobody want to lose the match. When one hall is winning, they're losing. The team will take. The, the football away. I also remember us uh, celebrating Kuva Games in 2000, Kuva Games in 1999. That was my first one. I recall it was during that time that there was short of drinks in the whole Cape Coast. Uh, I remember Castle Milk Stout sponsored that festival. Kuva made up of Commonwealth, uh, Unity, uh, Volta. Atlantic Hall, Africa Hall, and Adeshi Hall. Okay, uh, these halls uh, come together to form the Kuva Games, and was so powerful, so so powerful. I've never witnessed any celebration. It was just the biggest carnival. If I want to just identify any carnival that can match that one, probably the carnival in London, Nottingham Carnival. That one comes close to. The Cuba Games during that time, there was uh, a barrier from the the UCC hospital. Uh, from UCC hospital, no vehicle was allowed to just move from that place to Atlantic Hall, full of people from the street, and we had a lot of fun over there. Um, uh, I also remember. <laughs> I also remember the time that we had at the hall. Uh, sometimes, when we are just in need of food, moving from uh, room to room, especially level 300 or floor 300, uh, the female floor, soliciting for food from them. Now, when we get the food, and we we were eating, when we get the food that we are eating the food, we get to a point where. We don't want others to be part of it. We quickly rush to uh, the female washing room or bathroom to continue our meal. The idea, just one, to just have fun, and the next one was to also to prevent more hands to enjoy the meal. Uh, during the student days, in Atlantic Hall, I mean, the noise is usual. Most of the time, I mean, we make a lot of noise. Some students, we're having one friend, I've forgotten the name. Sometimes you wake up around one o'clock and they'll be shouting, come to me, or come to me, or come to me, or for more than four hours. I mean, and these things are some of the things. And then sometimes, I mean, the ladies too, sometimes we used to tease them and all of that. I remember in one, in one occasion where a lady washed about 24 pants 
and then and then, then all the students were around they did because they didn't see the person but they were watching the person who come and remove it and the lady couldn't come back to remove all the part from the line you know these are all students days that and then the power if you look at the power in those days i mean it was it was more interesting and more of uh, i mean entertaining if you look at people who were involved and then our colleague our uh, i mean mother's uh, our sister horse will also come from legon they will come from the kutu come from the what do you call it the the the, the, the kumasi and then the the the, the vandals will also come and when they all come and they will meet it was more competition and the competition was sometimes quite interesting and then sometimes they will even award i mean the best i mean hall i mean in the, in, the, in the process and it was devoid of fight and all those things and then at those times too there were that kind of drinking and this thing was not that too much but look as if these days uh, students have resorted to more drinking and all of that i mean so the experiences that we the three years that we experienced in the hall i must say that it was it was quite interesting and then sometimes if you go to the hall one of the things that i remember you know those times some of the seniors will go to town and they'll have their own fill with some of the town girls and then they'll give them their bathroom number you know each year you realize that the numbers some of the numbers the bathroom switch the top so they'll give you a number when you come and search for them you only realize that the place is a bathroom so <laughs> those times well so when they come then those experiences were quite interesting in the hall and then apart from that the academically too the students were good and then like some of us who were always sitting because of the noise we were always sitting at the shore now that they call it the breeze those they used to be canoes all over there were no any other places that so we crossed the the street and uh, the, the main road you go and sit by the shore and then we will do, make sure that we do our studies there and then we'll come back and then join people fooling uh, but in the night we'll make sure that at least we stay overnight and then do a lot of studies <laughs> Coming to Atlantic Hall, I was in Cape Coast, I was teaching at Pedri GSS. So I knew a lot about Atlantic Hall. And I made a decision that when I go to Atlantic Hall, I become the president of the hall. Even before I bought the forms. And this attracted a lot of criticisms even among the staff of Pedri GSS. You can never be the president of Atlantic Hall because it's a male-dominated hall. Eventually, I gained admission and I entered the hall. First year, I was the HIV AIDS coordinator for the hall. I was also the HIV AIDS coordinator for Gamsu and going through the second cycle schools uh, to talk about HIV AIDS. After my one year stay in Atlantic Hall, my perception of becoming the president of the hall changed. Because per the constitution of the Atlantic Hall at that time, the president was virtually the, he was the ceremonial figure. As at that time, about 90% of the work in Atlantic Hall was done by the vice president. Per the constitution, the vice president was also the same person as the welfare officer. And as the welfare officer, you were in charge of the room allocation, which at that time was a big issue. And per allocating rooms to your colleagues, you have so much power. Why then do I go and contest for president? No, I really wanted to manage the hall. So I made a decision not to contest for the whole. Some people were even at that time, based on the constitution, some people were even in the hall. They wouldn't even know the, the president of the hall. But for the welfare part, that was part of the vice president. And the vice president also being the chairperson of the Atlantic Hall Parliament, you have so much power. 
So I made a decision to go for vice president. And hmm, it wasn't easy. That was where I realized that if you want power, you need to work for it. And I did work for it. There was one guy by name who had a guy named Autonomous. Autonomous had to develop a different language in Atlantic home by using the Bible, King James Version. So we had to code to bring out something unique because a woman was going to contest for the, 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 the most powerful position in the hall. And you can't get it like that. My campaign manager was Daniel. We went to the then high priest because if you want to contest any position in the hall at that time, the high priest must at least accept you before you could go. I went to the high priest and the high priest and his team said they can't let a woman be their leader. So power also fielded another person, a man to contest me. We ended up being four. Eh, we started the campaign at a point we realized that I was zero. The power team had taken over the, the whole thing. And when I assessed my chances of winning, I realized that I was zero. So my team had to sit down, re-strategize, brought in autonomous, he charged us. Because it was election. And autonomous came in with the King James version. So as soon as he leaves, he comes back from his lecture room. He's standing at the entrance of the Atlantic Hall with my flyers saying, My sister, thy brethren, thy sister want to contest. So he was using the King James version to communicate and it caught fire. I leave the hall every evening to go to diaspora because all those staying in the diaspora they had to vote i didn't sit down my campaign manager encouraged me that we have zero but we will still contest and we did a lot of work sometimes after going through a piosika i'm a, I'm a mama and it environs by the time i come back there are tears in my eyes you have worked more than a student what you could, should do in a day. And as soon as you get to the entrance of the Atlantic Hall, we have the drama group that they are, they call themselves, always around. And they will start drumming, attacking you, using our language. This is Atlantic Hall documentary, so permit me to, to, to use some of our jargons. Tutu Niba! Oh, Ashao! So, these attacks will come. They are not attacking you because uh, you are Ajwa. They are attacking you because you have ventured into their domain. And therefore, that is their language. So, they wouldn't spare you whether you are a man or you are a woman. You have come into our domain. So, this is what is there for us. Take it. On the manifesto reading day, they had arranged it in such a way that the vice president, which was the, which was keenly contested on, in that year, because there was a woman in it, was the last people to read their manifesto. And I was the last person to read. So after reading, the program was done. And my the three people had the opportunity to read it. It got to my turn. You know a woman going to contest, at least there should be little, little feminine things. My makeup is there, my hair beautifully done in my suit. Then the team, you see, I have a, a team, and other contestants also have their, they had their camps. So they had tied politin bags full of water. And they sent it to 600 floor. So before you could even address them, as I stood before the microphone, the bomb started coming. They, that is was what we call bomb. You throw the water. And it's, it was the water has been tied in such a way that it was turgid. 
So they will throw it from a distance. And with the speed and the gradients, it will hit you. Shoo! Shoo! So the bombs were just coming like that. Yes, in as much as the bombs were coming, those bombs should not stop me from achieving what I wanted to. So I contested. I stood in the rain that they were pouring on me and delivered my manifesto and they listened. When they realized that those kind of bombs could not deter me, I didn't run away from it. Then they came back to ask questions. The very people who were preventing me from reading the manifesto, they listened. That's why I'm saying that they listened. They came, asked questions. Then the following morning was the voting day. We voted. And to the glory of God, I had 73% of the votes. That is how I won. So Atlantic Hall men are the men that they would like to pass you through the fire. And when you come out of the fire, it's like gold. You are refined. And they supported me in my reign as the vice president. And thanks be to God, we, I was able to succeed with my team. Because during the long back, when we took over during the long back, I didn't go home. I stayed, wrote letters for sponsorship alone. Went to the city of Accra to seek for sponsorship for the Atlantic Hall because at that time, the hall had a problem with water. And per our language, Atlantic Hall language, we were doing shit on sheets. You put a paper there and you shit on it. And then another person, because the pump that was supposed to pump water up for you to flash, the pump was so weak they could not pump water for you to flash. So flashing wasn't part of us. We, we were doing shit on shit, SOS. And it was my hard desire to take away that problem. I went to stay in Accra, went round, 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 round. Thanks be to Krista Saf. That time we were in water crisis. Eight years was in Atlanta. University of Cape Coast actually had water crisis. And they were coming to the Boise in Western region to fetch water. So I went to Krista Safo, and Krista Safo, Apostle Safo, received me, asked me, I communicated that we wanted polytan containers to help us get water for Atlantic Hall. One question that he asked me, if the church helps you to solve that problem, what will you give to the church? Without consulting my hall master, I, the force, the, I mean, the time in me, that is the impulse, I just said, if any member of the Christa Safo gets admission to the University of Cape Coast, we will give that person residential status, and I will do that. Whether the person was made residential or non-residential, we will do that. At that time, there wasn't any policy of in, out, out, no. That policy wasn't there. So, and sharing of the rooms was the prerogative of the welfare officer. So I had that power to do it. Mr. Safo said I should go, they will help me solve the problem. I came back, I informed my hall master. When I informed my hall master, my hall master said something that people are sleeping in their rooms without contributing to the hall. So if you have made a decision that people, uh, uh, you give them residential status and we will have our whole problem solved, why not? It's a good deal. Admission started, Krista Safu gave me four people and I fulfilled my part by making them residential status. I gave them beds. It was time for Krista Safu to fulfill their part. Krista Safu gave Atlantic Hall 10 polytank containers, the huge ones. Not knowing that University of Cape Coast as a university had also written to the same Krista Safu for water tanker, which also has something to do with water. So University of Cape Coast had requested for water tanker. I didn't know. I 
had gone to Krista Safu for polytan containers to store water. When Krista Safu was bringing the containers, they had written University of Cape Coast Atlantic Hall. Before they were reached, the university community had communicated that Krista Safu was bringing them polytan containers. So, registrar was ready to receive the, the containers at the forecourt of the university administration. I told my home master that said, this is the deal that I went for it. I can't let it go. Home master told me that he was appointed by the university, so he can't find the university. My president said he was not ready to fight the university. I was ready to get what I worked for because it was my father's money that I used to stay in Accra, went round round, it wasn't the horse money. So I would defend my father's money. I went in and the university authorities were not ready to give me the thing. So whilst we were waiting, beautifully, the load loaders arrived with the polytan containers and what saved me was that they had written University of Cape Coast all right, Atlantic Hall. So they handed over to the vice chancellor. The vice chancellor handed over to registrar. Just as he finished, I ran from the audience quickly and touched in between the registrar and the vice chancellor. Then I stretched my hand because I was for Atlantic Hall. And they handed over to me. It came in the media a whole lot of things. It wasn't easy because the university needed it. However, there are few instances as, as a student you feel not so happy about your hall. But it's not your hall, but it's a situation. There was this time um, the UCC sports field was under construction, so we couldn't have had the normal university games, inter hall games on campus, so we had to go to, uh, I think, at the side of school field. Then, that was another opportunity for the two halls, ATN and its uh, cast forth to show supremacy. So, all the other halls were there. But, who to enter the fourth first? If you come, the last person who enter will come and show more supremacy. So, we all gathered at the uh, streets of Adesada, waiting to see who will enter for the last person to enter. Then, in the midst of that, there arise serious tension, exchanging of stones and a whole lot. And there was this guy standing right beside me who was hit by a heavy stone and he has to be rushed to the hospital. I felt so disorganized, so sad that day because I asked myself, it could have been me. And if it is me, my father is that strict type. And he never, he will never expect that you are in school and you are involved in. So you only hear that my son had been injured, injured where? Through this crash. So the whole, the whole of the day I was so disorganized, I had to leave the food. It, was, it wasn't a pleasant experience. The second experience that wasn't so good was the same two halls. We had a football match at, um, then that time the university food was okay. So we had a football match at the main university food. And during that time, whoever scored the first goal has finished. We don't need to enter the full 90 minutes. Once you finish scoring your first goal, that is the end. Then, luckily, ATL scored the first goal. And automatically, that means we're leaving the foot. By the time we realized, stones, and the one who scored the goal was just hit by a heavy stone. You have to be rushed. On the issue of football, Atlantic Hall, the investors were playing a kind of gala with Ogwa Hall, with Casford, with the Vaco, the, the, the Bees. The Vacos are the, the, the Bees, and then the Atlantic Hall. We formed a ball catching committee. Atlantic Hall had a ball catching committee in such a way that when Atlantic Hall is being defeated, we shouldn't, de we shouldn't let them score us. When we realize that we can't match them, then the ball catching committee will run to the park, go and catch the ball. And it will bring confusion so the match will not end. And they were the kind of team that I was feeding very much. 
because anytime they will be rematched, they will reschedule the match. And then when we realized that we can't score Casford, Casford was our opponent, as we were, uh, they were monkeys. So we would give them banana and then they would, they would just keep quiet. But Casfordians said they were the gentlemen. And once they made efforts to, they wanted to colonize us on the football pitch and it won't work. So the ball catching committee, there wasn't any match. If we could score Casford, then the, 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 the match will end. But if you can't score Casford, Atlantic Hall was not ready for defeat and we have never been defeated. Defeat is not part of Atlantic. We have to do something to, to, to end the game. We did that and then we couldn't, we could never continue with the match. It ended there. Anytime they reschedule, we would do our thing because as of that year I was there, Casfodian's team were tougher than us in terms of football. Then Casfodians had their whole week. They came for possession within the university halls. They said their uh, uh, Adishi Hall is the agreement. We don't care. We Atlantic Hall, we have our women. But our men were going to Adishi to go against some and come and fuck. It's a normal thing there. And then Atlantic Hall was also having the children's pool because they had given birth in the uh, Apiosika, the community that we had found ourselves. So the errand boys around were our children. And they were telling us that, Papa yeah, So we were also not sucking them. We were feeding them as and when we could afford. Sometimes towels, uh, shorts, dresses, other things, we were giving it to them. So we saw the community as part of us and we were also part of them. And Casfodians came for possession. In fact, this is a very nasty aspect of me that I, I'm, I'm talking about it. Today, I'm not proud of it, but I did it. And since it's a documentary of Atlantic Hall, permit me to say it. They were making too much noise. They came day one, I didn't do anything to them. Then day two, they came, I didn't do anything. But day three, I realized that if I don't get up, Casfodians will claim the supremacy and I wasn't ready for them. So I lined up buckets of water at the ground floor with heater in them. We were heating the water. And then we have a kind of hole that will go to rooftop. That we put a ladder there, we climb. I don't know if it has been sealed. We put a ladder there, then we climb to rooftop. I have put men there. So there was that kind of chain of supply chain. They will pick the hot water. When it gets to the inside there during the ladder, then we put powder pepper in it, in the hot water, and we stir it. It goes up there. So as the Casfodians were coming, as soon as they go closer to our hall, we pour the powdered pepper in the water on them. So when they did this, pepper in their eyes. It was my, my, my creativity because I wasn't ready for Casfod to defeat me. And I won't allow them at any time. So we were able to beat Casfodians because why were they going to defend ourselves? And then they ran away. I was also... <laughs> I was able to actually wear red any time I had to go for a meeting at Casford. I was wearing red to go there. Then they would shout me, oh, tutu niba. So it got to a point that Casfordian said, Atlantic Hall had made a woman to rule them, so they are no longer tough. Then Atlantic Hall also said that, yes, they, they voted for a woman to use her vagina to get things for the hall, and that's why the hall we are developing. So this was the slogan that we were going through. The students have to be feeling that they are confident. And so at that time, uh, Casfodians called themselves superpowers. So since I was a Latin student, 
I say that uh, let, uh, let us coin another word which is higher than superpowers. And so we coin the word superissimo, the most superior of superiors. So that was the word that you often hear uh, superissimo. experience apart from the main power group displaying we have alumni power that comes to also display then I was there watching and only to see my loved teacher at secondary school performing in power group luckily there was uh, this secondary school mate beside me and I called I said ah see Sarah she's the one in he said you sure I said yes it's Sarah later I realized that he was even the one leading the alumni power. And this is somebody with so much respect. And I said, wow, well, once Seras is in power, I have no option than to be a, a fan of power. After the, after the power night, I mean, we, we met Seras, myself and my colleague. And I was like, hey, Seras, you are performing in power. I said, look, you cannot be in this eight year without being a lover of power. And that was my number one morale to be a fan of power and its activity. I mean, those times people were thinking that power is more of some spiritual... Look, I had friends in the group. I don't see anything spirituality about their activity. It is just there to increase the morale in the whole. I mean, without power, eight years is no eight year. It is that element of the sacred choir that makes it here what it is today. Um, part of the entertainment was a uh, sacred choir. They have uh, made series of songs which uh, were very interesting to note, especially for its content. Here as Hall Master, I have also to be a member of the sacred choir so that I can control them. Uh, this is because in an attempt to make them themselves an enigma, they seem to let people think that uh, there is something spiritual about it. And so they had effigies that uh, sometimes they gave for libation, etc., etc. To it. So being part of them, then you have to explain to them that any inanimate object to which you break an egg or you put uh, what, a libation is empowered to receive spirits. And those spirits can mar you. And it is not only in school, but also for the future. And so together with them, we destroyed the effigies which they had, which made people think that it is a cult. Uh, I have left and so I don't have an oversight any longer. But I became part intentionally so that you can regulate them. And the hall master was also supposed to be a patron or for regulatory uh, uh, purposes. And then the power to, I mean, it was those days, it was a good watch. During the power week, people travel from all over the country, sometimes some from outside to come and join the group. And then it was interesting those days when, I mean, they were mature people and then there were interesting things in the hall. And the power was the hallmark of the hall, that when we are celebrating a hall week, you can see people coming from all walks of life, all campus here, who actually come to Atlantic Hall, especially the Friday night, the usual Friday night. With um, the Christian Fellowship, but it was a, a 
nice body in the hall and it is still a nice body in the hall because it took care of our spiritual growth and um, uh, it is made up of different uh, denominations gamsu agcm pensa uh, we we all came together to form that uh, christian fellowship uh, in fact when we came uh, like i said initially but the, the the president was an old man uh, yes and the executives they were matured guys and they were grounded in the things of the spirit and well versed in the things of the bible so uh, it was it was very good exercise that we had by then so i joined uh, every wednesday around 4 30 we'll be going around calling uh, mariners to uh, converge it used to be held in um, this the jclc uh, today i think it is it is being done in the quadrangle but at first it was solely done in the uh, jclc so we go around singing sorry 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 why sorry my mom you sorry sorry and in fact, it was it was fantastic exercise that um, we undertook. In fact, uh, I joined it. I remember when we came, um, the freshest aquaba that was organized by the Christian Fellowship. I was the one who preached. That was where <laughs> I, I was I was baptized into 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 the group fully. But after preaching for. The, the, the Aquaba Freshers organized or led uh, Wednesday service. I was um, welcomed officially into the, the fellowship. And through that, I became the evangelism director uh, for one year. And then the following year, I was made the Bible studies coordinator where we used to we uh, move from room to room, sharing the word of God with uh, our our members and other people that we met in, in, in the room. And then we also used to have our Tuesday executive prayer meeting. In fact, it was it was basically to take care of our our spiritual uh, growth whilst uh, the academic exercise was being taken care of. The spiritual aspect was equally taken care of by the Christian Fellowship Association in the, in, the, in, in the hall. We had cordial relationship with the other uh, religious uh, groups like that of the traditional council and that of uh, the Muslim council. In fact, the Muslim council, they used to have their service on floor 500 but now I realize they've moved to um, uh, floor 400 rather. Well, I don't know if it is because of their numbers. Uh, that is why probably they've moved to the floor 400 because uh, the floor 500 where they used to have their service, I think there's a, a polytank beside them. So probably it's because of their numbers. That is why they have moved to floor 400. Sometimes when we organize our programs and we felt it necessary to invite them, we did invite them to join and I think vice versa. Then um, the traditional council, in fact, uh, I can also say that uh, ATL traditional council was well recognized because during whole weeks um, when the Deba was uh, organized on Saturdays, the Saturdays of uh, the whole weeks. In fact, it was a big pro program. It was a big program where we, we had our the, the king and the queen well dressed and we invited the Kekus uh, chiefs around to also join in our exercise. So, in fact, um, the traditional council, they, they also played a vital role in the whole and like I said they were well recognized throughout the region because we were inviting chiefs even from them. The, I think the the Oguamai there was a time that we invited him 
to our Deborah. Uh, so between Christian Council, the Muslim Council, and that of uh, the traditional Council, there was that rapport, there was that cordiality, and we, we, we had a peaceful coexistence in the hall. With the cadets, um, we were not first Navy or Naval cadets. It uh, was my time, the process started, but it was my time that everything was cemented. Uh, we changed it to Naval Cadets. And it was during my time that, through the help of the commander at the Western uh, base, uh, Commander Plump, helped us to just get the uniform, the first uniform that we, uh, we got. We got it from um, the Western Command at that time and uh, we were having some army officers in our midst we were having army officers in our midst who were on steady leave i think three or four and they were taking us through trainings uh, uh, security trainings and we we're not only learning not learning the basic uh, uh, cadet training Marching here, and there, preparing for parade and other things, but we're learning other stuff as well. Um, first aid stuff, uh, we're learning how to attend to injured person and other stuff as well. They were all part of our training. Um, the cadets, uh, the, the last parade that I took part. I think during Dr. Um, Dr. Chris, who is now lit, he was our hall master, Dr. Chris. And I remember the general secretary of NPP then, um, I've forgotten the name, the general MP, secretary of NPP were all were part of the invited guests uh, at that time. Uh, the cadets training at all points in time when we go for the cadet training we are coming back we must go through certain places notable among them we have to go through Uwa. we will just enter Uwa without any any resistance from the Uwa people or from the monkey people we we'll go to Uwa we we'll go and sing there, we we'll go and just wake them up, we we'll enter the hall, sing for uh, for some minutes, at least not less than 20 minutes, we we'll do our press up in front of the monkey people, then we we'll come back. If anybody has committed anything against the laws of Atlantic or the Atlantic City, then we we'll bring that person to Oba Pong. The, the ATA cadet people will come and just pawn the person at Oba. We had a wonderful, and strange, and interesting songs that sometimes we sing. We're just singing those songs without meaning. One of them song, put up top, contumbre, put up the contumbre, put up the contumbre, any album, quite contumbre, any kuma contumbre, put up the contumbre, put up the contumbre. And I also remember, I don't blame you, I blame myself. I don't blame you, I blame myself. I take my long, long pen. I write my long, long application. I don't blame you, I blame myself. I think Singing a profane, doing a profane, pictures and things, hanging them at the forecourt of the thing. That, that was us. Sorry, but that is how we are. <laughs>
are some of the best days where sometimes during the whole week I do the cooking for the students and then, and then you realize that sometimes I cook special jollof for my students and then I mean they were all happy moving around and uh, the cooking competition and I know I'm not going to move away from that anytime the whole week comes up I'll still show up for my cooking competition and make sure that my students even though not around so still for my presence. In fact, that time, eight year hall, we crown the whole all weeks on campus. So it becomes a whole festival where everybody are taking the whole festival. And you, you have no choice than to join the whole week. There was this experience where there had been a, a crash between ATL and Casford. And proud to that, certain stringent measures were being taken to curtail problems of the eight year hall week. So we had to go to float. You know, eight year hall week without the mega float through the Cape Coast town is no hall week. So we had to go to float. The trailers were packed from ATL up to the administration. I mean everybody in our hall Moraves were just ready for this hall week and management told the hall president you cannot go to Hall Week float unless you, you come and sign the bond. And to sign the bond is, is, is a, a big tax for, I mean, the whole, whole president at that time. The whole president at that time was called Chazo. Chazo wasn't ready to go and sign because he can't guarantee whether we'll go and misbehave and that's going to affect him. But this guy was there and the power guys and everybody went to him. So we had to push our whole president to go and sign. By the time he went to sign and come at the trail and I started here. And it, 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 it was the I mean the whole float I really enjoyed. Because it started like you go, you no go, you go, you no go, and later we had to go and it was really mega. Whole week celebration was mega. So our whole week celebration Ah, the women were really involved and we had something that we call the Goat Catching Festival. We were trying to imitate a uh, Abuache Festival. So they would go and hide two different goats here and there. Some women were part of the Asafu group. The Atlas ladies. They were part of the Asafu group that would go and hunt for the goats. That, these are the uniqueness of the women in Atlantic Hall. The little that stayed showed a lot of bravery. That you find it that they were not leaving the hall activities for the men to do only. No, they went for it. They were able to catch. So the first Asafu group of the hall that will come with the goats is the winner. And they will come and place it at the feet of the, the king, Atlantic Nana, the feet of it. And then after that, it will be given to them to go and make uh, pepper soup upon chin crackra. That was one of it. But coming back to the hall's issue, I remember a hall week. Casfordians had gone to town to raw raw dross. That was how we termed it. To show their nakedness and the university said no horrific but we had also planned so i had to negotiate and negotiate and finally i was able to get the university and, uh, authorities to agree that if anything happens if atlantic hall goes to town with their load loader for floating and come back with skirmishes, my certificates will be held. I will not graduate. So I said I was ready for that. We have a jacket, a marina jacket that we tie here, blue with marina inside, blue, tie here, tie there. That morning, I saw them lots. More than our number. Where from these people? And they all come and tell me that they are staying in diaspora. So I got suspicious and then I formed my own concept. When all of them had bought and then the load loader was ready to move, three load loaders, sponsors, they gave it to us. 
with music and others and some of us who were going to work I took the megaphone and I told them that I had cameramen six I had one in front of the first load loader one at the back at the last one in the side one at the side one at the side taking videos of anybody on the whole program so anybody that will run or draws I promised that person I was going to give the tape to the vice chancellor so that the university authorities would deal with him or her and not me. Then people started falling off. Not knowing that it was Casfordians that had come to buy the shirt and they were going float with us so that they would go and misbehave and we would also be banned from celebrating the whole week. But I was smarter. Uh, in all the whole it was nice if you play football at the quadrangle you were permitted to play football there but a pound of flesh there should be no blood you playing football at the quadrangle doesn't mean that you should break the luva blades so if you break one you buy three that was my rule that was our job with best rule as the vice president of the whole so the moment they themselves were playing and they couldn't cry and then they would come and look at me, I would be there watching. I would descend. If you rap, no my to jot it down. They don't want any trouble. They will go and buy it and bring it to me. But the following day, they will still play. That is the uniqueness of the hall. The quadrangle was serving a multi-purpose uh, center for the hall. The badminton was being played there. Uh, basketball was also being played there. But aside that one, it was also the community kitchen. Uh, during our time, we we'll would just be moving. I don't know whether Auntie Mansa is still there. We we'll go and just get uh, uh, full materials from Auntie Mansa. We we'll gather ourselves, just get materials, prepare our soup, then we'll prepare our fufu. We'll pound everything within the, quad or at the quadrangle. So we used to prepare food at the quadrangle. So when you are preparing it, you hear your brothers, you hear your sisters shouting, please, but your minion chino wa hanomo. Say someone will just, uh, just throw the salt at you. Can I get pepper? Then another person will throw the pepper at you. And I remember the chief coordinator for that activity during my time, now Dr. Omari Asante at US, Emwase, probably known as Emwase, was then the chief coordinator. We prepared the food at the quadrangle, we we'll sometimes slaughter sheep, we we'll slaughter goat, we we also used to slaughter and place the animal activists, don't get me wrong, we used to slaughter uh, cats as well. Then we use them to just prepare food at the quadrangle and with the, those things at the quadrangle. And then the boys were stealing my steam and soup a lot. I don't know if they have stopped. When you prepare the soup and the stew, you have locked your door. By the time you come back, they had come to pour it and put the saucepan there. And when it was time for floats, women we were locking our doors because they will come for your fugu, they will come for your rig, they will come for your brazier and all those things and go and wear and go and showcase them in town. But we love our men. There were ATL Nichi, a ATL market, Mr. Your friend Web Supermarket. Now, it's my bear ATL. They say, Your friend say, Answer your car, ATL phone. And it's a BR, not ATL phone. I buy and chain. To me, buy and no, bear twenty one years and maybe medium bear and team is shop. Number two say eighty or four so go school. Into a more one or marba. Some of me here, here, the whole week. All week, you know, none me home be that. Into a year now, oh, my dear, no more inviting me. Now, my coho, no more coffee. Now, oh, my year, deba. A year almost say, oh, my year election. Oh, my year election, now, no more say, oh, be a worry. 
Orisana, no muso or mukesieno. No more by Gigi Toffees, name your man, your ma or yen chain. No more the Danny Pacco, no no moose. Chesser, na na yas and papa, a wire de papa. Until you two milka, nay a call eighty, I'll be be a year, see a quiet year. A becker say a hock round yet. A wire yen deck. Because a new ma na eighty year yen. F. Nay, dance so. Fridays almost sat. No mushi jama, no be a funeral. Kiki, kiki, go back as a BBC. No more tent. Hey, hey, oh, yes, no be quo, no more, no more, no more, sir. No, send your boy, no, no, just a one more day and wait me as a. is associated with the death of one of our holes called Eribet. Eribet uh, was a very handsome gentleman and uh, his father was to be made a chief in one of the villages in Volta region and the father ran away. But then the father's sister died and he had to go. And the night that the father went, he had a stroke. The mother was informed that the father had had a stroke. When he went, she went. She also had a stroke the same night. Then the sister was told that parents have all had a stroke, so she should come. When she went, within a week, she died. And Eribet organized a very big funeral for the sister. And the week after the funeral, when he came, in the morning, he was out pistic. And his roommates rushed from this room that it appears there's gas leakage. Then he rather, who was outside the room, went inside the room to check what was happening. And immediately, he went in, the gas cylinder exploded. Boom! And that's the boom that they say. And this gentleman, you know, had burns all over the body. And as a medical person, I know when you have one third burns over your body, you are likely to die. I rushed the boy to the UCC hospital. It was too much for them to handle. I transferred the boy to Kolebu. Within one week, he died. And uh, when he died, I had to convey the body alone to his village before the eight-year holders came. And there were a lot of funny things when we sent the boy's body to the house. The family uh, <laughs> didn't welcome the body. And the body, you know, almost make us believe that some spiritual things can happen because when you carry the body the body lifts itself up when you carry the body to the the the, the, the church it turns those who are carrying them back to the house as a person so it was a very 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 sad situation that we misuse as boom it was sad to cut the story short. I want to say, I want to end here by saying that it's a privilege to be a mariner. You learn a lot. But when you finish school in our time and you get back to the society, you have to be reoriented because there we were speaking profane language. So my daddy had to sit me down and say, Mommy, you have finished school. Committee in the society, we don't speak this language. So you have to start learning the societal one. And I went through orientation for me to be able to become, to have goodness of fit into the society. It's great to be a mariner, and I'm a proud mariner. 
and I will tell my ladies that the men in Atlantic have protect their ladies. That one, at that time, they were protecting us. You can't come from outside and come and befriend a lady and one time they will hear that you befriended the lady and you have stopped with the lady. They will come for you. The men in Atlantic will come for you. They will come and take you. Whatever they will do to you, they will do to you. So we had that kind of protection, the security and the love. Yes, even though it was difficult with their language and the kind of pictures they would paste around, we were able to get that kind of security from them. We cannot talk as if all credit comes to us. Credit comes to us through our predecessors. We had, I think, the first female uh, power warden. That is Mrs. Gladys A. Kuban. Okay? And we had Jane, uh, not Jane, but uh, Professor Upukwajima, who initiated the ATLFM with the help of Honorable Tutubi Kwachi. So they initiated ATLFM. So when I came as a hall master, then we expanded the vision that it can be a central broadcasting. Uh, station together with TV make uh, CDs of lectures etc etc to structure their programs that it is instructive not only entertainment to students so that they can have healthy discussions and so you see that uh, ATL FM now has got some academic programs uh, etc etc but eventually we are hoping that it will have a broad uh, television station and that is why um, a plot was acquired for them so that uh, the future of it uh, will, will be fine. But they maintain the name ATLFM uh, to show that we gave birth to it thanks to Professor uh, Opoku what I want to say is that let's mariners be proud wherever that they are. I learned a lot. It was that that enhanced my political career. That from there, I didn't go back from politics that I was able to contest 2020 parliamentary seats. Though I lost, I'm so proud of myself. Yes, so Atlantico trains you to become who you are. And I'm so grateful. Thank you.